Arashi, Prince of the Sky, Chapter 10, Vibes. Vibes. Cody walked and walked until the sun started to come up. He made sure to stay off the main streets in case some cop wanted to randomly start asking him questions. He just kept going over it and over it in his head. What did I do wrong? Why did this thing have to target me? But he shook off the thought and started thinking about what his next moves were going to be. So he was officially homeless and wanted for murder. He still had his hustles, but that wouldn't last long. They'd be looking for him. He had to leave New York for good if he stood a chance at starting over. He looked up at the sky, turning to light. Looked like it was about 6 a.m. When he looked around, he realized he had already walked himself south, out of the Bronx, through Harlem, and was already halfway through Midtown, a few blocks away from where the newsstand was that he worked at. The sound of the city was starting to come alive as another workday began. Garbage trucks screeched by to collect mounds of trash that developed on the streets every day. What would New York City look like without mounds of trash everywhere? He kept walking until he saw the newsstand from down the block. The streets were starting to pick up with more and more commuters. Now the question was, how is he going to act around his boss, Nagu? Nagu knew everything. He would be able to tell whatever was going on with him. Maybe that wasn't a bad thing. He needed answers because he for sure didn't have any. He took a deep breath and released his tension. He was excited to not have to walk anymore because his legs were killing him. Just as he was about to start moving again, he felt something in him stir. And not only that, the watch on his wrist started humming and lightly vibrating. Confused, he looked around in time to catch a glimpse of this young cat walking past him. He looked him dead in his eyes and his heart started to flutter. Time seemed to slow down for a moment. There he was, the boy from the train. He was captivating and beautiful. The watch was screeching at this point. Was it reacting to that boy? They caught eyes for a moment, and it was as if he could see right through Cody with his light gray eyes. His skin was a perfect complexion of caramel. He wore a blue windbreaker jacket and black jeans. He had a fresh cut under his right eye in the shape of a crescent moon. He looked so sad, but there was something deeper, a great power. He'd never felt such intense energy from anyone like this before, or such an attraction. Their eyes didn't disconnect until Cody felt the pain in his stomach again. The aching burn forced him to avert his eyes and turn towards the side of the building. Damn it, he thought to himself. He could still feel the boy's eyes on him. He forced himself to breathe through the moment until the boy passed. He tried to calm himself. He could feel the shadow starting to take over again. So he closed his eyes and tried to think of happy thoughts and memories. After a moment, the pain subsided and the screeching stopped. He took a deep breath again. What the f heck was that about? He turned the corner to try to see where he had gone. He saw that the boy had gone straight to the newsstand. He paced back and forth for a moment. Uh, how the hell am I going to be able to stand being around Nagu and now this boy? What if they call me out? I look like crap. Damn it. He went back and forth in his head, not finding any reason to move forward. Then he stopped as a voice carried itself into his thoughts. Go to him. Cody closed his eyes and let the voice tell him what to do. Oh, shoot. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. He began making his way across the street, but all he could focus on was the sound of his heartbeat. Boom, boom, boom. The nervousness was causing his neck to go stiff. Relax, Cody. You got this. You got it. Let's go. He swallowed hard as the pain in his stomach began to quiver. End of chapter 10. Chapter 10.